Hello, in this video we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we're going to look at influence measures. And this is part one of two videos. We're in the multiple linear regression setting, so this is our model. Y is equal to X beta plus some error. And we're going to, and we have to assume that the error, the error term has an average of zero and a variance covariance matrix is sigma squared I. Now, if you go in the R statistical software program, and type question mark influence dot measures. The following functions come up. Okay. R standard, R student, and these deal with outliers, and we covered these two functions in previous video 65 and 66 in this playlist. So this playlist is general linear models regression and uh, hat values. And DF fits, that's what we're going to cover in this part. DF beta, covariance ratio, and Cook's distance. That's what we're going to cover in part two. So all these, these seven functions are in base R, and they help you deal with finding influential and outliers points. So here's a, some definitions. And high, a high leverage observation is an observation that is far removed from the center of the regressor space. An outlier is an observation that seemingly contradicts the postulated value. And the influential observation is an observation that exerts substantial influence on the fitted model when removed significant changes to the fitted model results. Okay, And here's um, you know, a VIN-like diagram of what, you know, how we can classify each of these observations. So this square represents outliers. This square represents high leverage. And this dark border represents influential uh, points. So we can have outliers that are not high leverage, meaning, you know, they're towards the center of the regressor space and, and do not exert influent, uh, substantial influential on the model. Um, high leverage too means that it's far removed from the data set, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's an outlier or that it has uh, inf influence on the model. And we'll, we'll get into this a little bit. So looking first at the hat values. Now the hat value is, are the diagonal elements of the hat matrix. Now the hat matrix is X, X transpose, X inverse, X transpose. But just looking at the diagonal elements. And it's kind of neat because those tell us which observations are um, have high leverage. So identifying high leverage points may or may not be influential. And I, I have an illustration below to, to for that. But briefly uh, these were discussed in previous video 65. Um, now from previous video 39, we know the hat values are between, you know, 1 over n and 1. And when they're close to 1, we know that that i-th set of regressors are far from the center of the, of the regressor space. And when they're really small, we know that the i-th uh, regressors are close to the center of the data. And the rule for high, evaluating high leverage or classifying high leverage points is if the hat value is greater than this. So it's essentially two times the average hat value. Then we're going to classify it as high leverage. Now here's a few examples of data. And we're, and, and, and we're trying to evaluate these three points right here. Okay. Now this one is high leverage right, because it's far removed from the center of the data. But if we were to fit this model, we'll get something like this. And then if we remove it, we'll actually get something that's very similar. So it's not an outlier. It's not influential, meaning when we remove it, the model is very stable. But it is high leverage. Now this one here, it, this is an interesting case because if, if we leave it in, this is going to kind of pull the regression model a little sideways, right? So it is high leverage, meaning it's removed from the center of the data. Um, it's influential because when we take this value out, 
then the model is here as opposed to something like this. So it's influential um, and it is an outlier because it doesn't follow the model. This one here, when we fit a regression equation and we just look at the residual, it's actually going to be very small. So in, if we look at that fitted model, it's going to seem like this is not an outlier, right? Because here's the fitted model, it's going to, the residual is going to be very small. But if we remove this point, then the regression equation does this. So it's highly influential, meaning if we leave it in or take it out, the model changes substantially. Um, and it is high leverage because it's far from the center of the data. So let me go back to this picture to show you what we just did. Um, now, all three of those cases were high leverage, right? Um, and two of them, we, they weren't identified as outliers initially. In two of in two of the three, you know, one of them was an outlier and it was influential. Um, one, of course, was you know all three were high leverage, but one was not considered an outlier when we fit the model with I. But it is influential because when we take it out, the model changes significantly. And one was just high leverage when we added and removed that data point. The the fitted values of the model didn't change much. So that's why that's what I mean by we can classify different situations into all of these. So we just found three cases that are all high leverage that fit into, into this. Now the next function in the influential measures for R is called DF fits. It's called the difference in the fits. And it's the number of standard error that the fitted value changes if the ith case is removed, right? So here, if we fit the value and then remove it, the fitted values are going to be very close. So DF fits for this case is going to be small. And here, DF fits is going to change. It's going to be a value, you know, a, a little bit bigger. Here, DF fits is going to be quite big. The difference in the fitted values is going to be large. And so that's what this value is trying to get at is to find points like this. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean these are errors and should be removed, but they're highly influential and they should be investigated, right? Maybe we're not adding enough uh, predictor variables into our model. Maybe we should add a, like a power transformation onto a regressor. You know, something is going on and we just need to investigate it. Okay, so now the uh, let's find the variance of the fitted value. Now, the fitted value is the ith set of regressors times a beta value. Now, this is the ith row of the the design matrix. So normally if we were to put X times beta, then we would get actually all the fitted values. But if we only want the ith fitted value, we take the ith row of this. So this is actually a row vector. So it's a one by K plus one vector. Now what's kind of weird, some would, because it's a vector, then say, oh, now it must be a column vector. So they'll put a transpose here. And some say, no, it's a row vector and it should stay like this. And so this, the, whether the transpose is here or not can be confusing sometimes. So you really have to know, you know, notationally what people are doing. So to find this variance, that's a constant. So we take it out front and then we transpose it out back. And the variance of the beta hat, this vector, is sigma squared x transpose x inverse. Now this piece right here is actually the ith diagonal of the hat matrix. So if we were to put the x, the full design matrix here and here, so x, x transpose x inverse x, that would be the hat matrix. But if we look at the ith row and the ith column, that isolates that i ith diagonal. So this is the variance of um, the fitted value. So DF fits is this. So it's the fitted value with all at, at the fitted value at observation I minus the fitted value at observation I, but with the ith observation removed, right? And then divided by the standard deviations, right? So it's the number of standard deviations that the fit value changes. But since this is an unknown parameter, we have to estimate it with the data. So we estimate it with the standard deviation. 
with the eyeth observation removed. Because right, if the eyeth observation is weird, it may overinflate that value, so we just leave it out. Now the rule is that if any uh, DF fits, the absolute value of any DF fits for any observation I, if it's greater than two times the square root of k plus one over n, we classify that observation as having high influence, right? Now, oh, this one did not, this one did not have high influence, but these did. Now, to me, what is the next result is a little bit mind-boggling to me, and this, it's, I'm so fascinated by this, that when we look at this, this value is calculated from all the observations. This one is calculated from, we take the eighth observation out and then calculate it. This is from all the observations. This is from, we have to remove the eighth observation to estimate it. But the next theorem tells us that we, we actually don't need to do separate regressions for each observation, right? All in the FFs can be calculated from one regression. Um, so from previous videos, let's prove that, from previous video 65, we showed this relationship is true. So this is the, the beta vector with all the observations used to estimate it. This is the beta vector where we take out the ith observation. This is the, you know, the design matrix. This is the ith row. This is the residual. Um, and then one minus the hat value. Now, if we pre-multiply this and this by the ith row of the design matrix, we get this, right? And then that. But this is what we call the fit. And this is what we call, you know, it's the fit without, at observation i, without observation i used to calculate the least squares estimate for beta and then we xi here. Well, this piece right here is the, is the i diagonal of the hat matrix. This is the residual, and of course, one over um, the hat matrix, one minus the i diagonal hat matrix. So now let's plug in what we just learned here. So this is uh, DF fits, but this top part, it can be calculated with this. And of course, this piece just carries over. Now let's rearrange it a little bit to here, right? Just rearrange, and this is the square root of the this quantity. But this right here is what we were calling TI in previous video 65. Now it looks like you know you, the standard deviation uh, estimate of the standard deviation without the ith observation looks like we can't, you know, we have to remove that observation to calculate it. Well. We don't. In previous video 65, we showed that we don't need to do that for for the R student statistic. Okay, so this DF fits can be represented like this on one regression fit. So all in DF fits can be calculated from one regression fit. Anyway, I just, I find that so fascinating. So the next video we're going to look at the next three functions in R called DF betas, Cook's distance, and the covariance ratio. So hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.